Okay, hi guys, we're back again, and today we're going to do a few examples of Carnot maps. And the first one is a nuclear launch code truth table on the left here. And so you can see we're going to go through how to make this. And uh, it's, regard, it's actually an association with a movie from 1983 called War Games. And a couple guys in a, a, a nuclear missile silo are about to launch missiles, and of course one of them doesn't comply. So we're changing the plot here a little bit and we're gonna we're just gonna simply I'll have the URL to the video on YouTube uh, in the in the video description and also it's uh, on my website but essentially we're only gonna require one person to turn the key so that's very not realistic and but we are going to require that the launch codes be correct in order to have a missile launch so notice that on the launch side here for the truth table, which is the output, we're only ever going to get an, a launch happening if the codes are correct and one of the two people turn their key. So in other words, if the codes are wrong, it doesn't matter even if both persons, if people turn their keys, we're still not gonna launch. As you can see, it's a zero. If one person, sorry, if the codes are right and none or one of them well, if none of them turn, then nothing happens. But if one of them turns their key, then it does launch. So we're now going to create the Carnot map for this. And it's over here on the right. So what I do is I go through each row on this table. And I'm, I'm going to make the Carnot map A slash BC. So A for the code and B and C are the two keys. And then I simply copy this output with the correct um, input. So, for example, with this one, 101, if we go over here, 101, one, here's the output, and it's a 1. After doing that, we have to circle the prime implicants. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention gray code. So, along the top here, uh, you would think. A binary numbers would be 0, 0, 0, 1, and then of course, wait, is this backwards? 1, 1, 1, 0? Well, in binary, it's not the correct order, but this is not binary. We're going to use gray code. And in gray code, the rule is you can only change one bit at a time. So that means if you look here that the way we're changing the bits, 0, 0, 0, 1, and now we can only change the left bit. So that's 1, 1, and then we change the right bit, so that's 1, 0. So this is gray code here. And that's how the Carnot map is required to be. Once we fill in the outputs of the launch in the squares, we can now circle the prime implicants. Now, prime implicants can only be circled in groups of 1, 2, 4, 8, powers of 2. And you also have to take the biggest prime implicant that you can. So in this case, I've circled these two and these two. And I've numbered them in uh, groups of 1 and 2. Now, let's scroll down a little bit. And you can see here that my number 1 is AC. So that's these two guys are asserted for A. And notice B changes from 0 to 1, so that doesn't count. But C is asserted with a 1-1. One, one. So that first number 1 group is AC. The second one, A is also asserted on the left. That's a 1. But up top, the BCs, uh, the B is asserted, but not the C, because the C changes from a 1 to a 0. So now you can see that when we um, write out our Boolean expression, we use a plus, a sum of products. That's what we're doing here. And we write AC plus AB. That's the Boolean expression for this Carnot map. You can think of it as multiplication is an and, and addition is an or. So we can now, we see that there's a common term here. It's an A, so we can factor it out. So now, we can go ahead and draw our um, circuit diagram. And our, our circuit diagram 
Uh, I've actually drawn two of them. The one on the left is the one that's not simplified. So we just draw three lines down for A, B, C, our inputs. And now our output, for, for this one, we combine A and C with an AND. And then we're combining A and B with an AND. And then, because it's added, we're ORing them into an OR gate. And we can do that. That, but it's equivalent if we factor out the A and simplify it. Here we have three gates. On the right, we have two gates. Because now, all we need to do is take C or B, put them into an OR gate, and then AND it with A. And you see, they're equivalent circuits, but obviously the one on the right is simpler because we're only using two, not three, gates. And so that is the solution for the circuit required for the missile launch codes. Let's stop there. Okay, hi. So our second video here is uh, a Carnot map of a security system. We have our home, a home here, and we have a light sensor on top of the home which uh, turns, turns on or uh, returns true when there is light in the daytime and returns zero at nighttime when it's dark. There's also a motion sensor here. The motion sensor returns true if there's motion and it returns zero if there is no motion. There is also a switch inside the house which can turn on the light and that's the output. So in other words, we have three inputs. A is the switch inside the house. If you turn that on, the light should go on. The light sensor, the light sensor is on top of the roof which sensors if it's day or night. And then there's the motion sensor. Now, we, um, let's kind of scroll down here a little bit and we can see that essentially if it is, so the zero, remember, counts as it's dark. If it is dark, which is nighttime, and there is motion for this second column, or second row, we get output, so the light should turn on. If it is daytime here on the fourth column, okay, so the switch is off, but it's daytime and there is motion, the light should not go on, okay? Uh, because it's daylight outside, we don't need the light on. But in the other situations, when the switch is on, on the left here, the light should come on regardless of whether there is motion or uh, it's day or night. So when we fill in the Carnot map here, we end up with this one. As an example, I'll give you just one of them, the second one here, zero, zero, 001. So that would be zero, zero, 001 is this one right here, and that one becomes a 1. So um, we circle the prime implicants. In this case, there's 2. And the other prime implicant, which is a 4, is, all, is, the, is the row down here. So let's call this one number 1 and number 2. You can see on the left-hand side here, Number one is simply A. It does not depend on B or C. It is O. If A is asserted, then it does not depend on B or C. So the bigger the prime implicant, the smaller the equation uh, or the, the expression here on the left. So on the, on the vertical prime implicant, the two ones, in that one, A is not asserted because it changes from 0 to 1. On the other hand, B is a 0, so that is a negative assertion. And then the C is a positive assertion. So that's not B, C. And now, it's a, it's a sum of our products. So when we write the expression, we just go A, B, C, draw three straight lines down, and then we'll notice it's a is ORed with B naught C being ANDed. So we'll take B, we'll NOT it, 
and we'll take C and put it into an AND gate here. And then we'll take that and OR it with A, and there's our circuit. So that circuit would uh, produce the correct output for those three inputs, the switch, the light sensor, and the motion detector. And the output being here on the right would be the light switch. Or sorry, not the light switch, the light bulb. OK? OK, our next Carnot map is the full adder. So for this one, uh, essentially, this is a really classic example of uh, a Carnot map. However, this one actually is more involved because we're going to get into uh, unique situations with the truth table. So as review, obviously, when we add bits, uh, 0 and 1 is a 1. Now, the carry in this case is a 0, and the sum is a 1. If we add a 1 and a 1, the carry is a 1, but the sum is 0. So the sum is on the right-hand side. Now, the full adder, unlike the half adder, is also capable of having a carry as an input. Because when you're adding uh, bigger numbers, you have to carry the, like for example, from the 1 plus 1, you have to carry this one, and that in the next column, this becomes the input carry. So here, one plus one plus one is three. Therefore, the sum is a one, and the carry is a one. Now, if we create the truth table here, zero 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 is sum zero, and the output is zero. A one is just one, and you can have that in a couple of different ways here. But a two. A 2, sum is 0, and the carry is 1. Okay, This is 1 again, sum 1, carry 0. And this is 2 again, just in a different way. This is 2 in a different way. And finally, the 3 becomes 1, 1 for the sum and the carry output. Now, if we take a look at the Carnot map, we fill this out. You can kind of scroll down here a little bit, maybe just to get the Carnot map in here completely. And there we go. And so essentially, we go through each row here, 0, 0, 0. We have to create a separate Carnot map or K map for the sum column and a separate one for the output carry column. So right now, let's do the sum. So we're doing this one here. And essentially, uh, we're just going to create you know, our gray code here. And then we're going to fill in the table. Now, what's interesting about this is that, unfortunately, we don't end up having any pairs. You know, uh, For the prime implicants, we need groups of 1, 2, or 4, and so on. But we don't have a group of two because there's none that are right next to each other. They're on diagonals, all of them. And so this is a unique situation that arises itself for the sum. Now, many uh, online descriptions of this will immediately just jump right into the answer and skip over how they get there. I'm actually going to explain exactly how this is done. So in number one, the number one prime implicate here is, if you look to the left, A is asserted. So we write down A. OK, for number two prime implicate, A is not asserted. So it's not A, not B, but C is asserted. OK, so not A not B, but C is asserted. And for the third one, A is asserted, B is asserted, and C is asserted. So it's A, B, C. And finally, for the last one, the fourth one, A is not, B is asserted, and C is not. So not A, B, C not. Now, now, we kind of have to take a look at this. And we can actually decide to create 
the digital circuit using logic gates using this uh, Boolean expression for the sum and in fact I'll do that at the end of the video just to show you what it looks like but there is a really substantial simplification that we can achieve using some Boolean algebra. Let's take a look at that. So what I do is, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange them. So I'll take this last term and put it second, pull down the first term, take the second term and put it as the third term, and just copy uh, the third term as the last term. Now, this box here will be my number one simplification. As you can see, I can factor out a common factor, which is C0. And when I do that, I get A B0 plus um, oops, hold on a second here. I think that's actually a mistake. Um, Okay, so I fixed that. Uh, it should actually be, uh, let me just get my mouse back here. You, you could see it there that um, it in fact is uh, a not b. I had the, the, had the, the not over the wrong variable there. It's a not b. So it's a b not, a not b. I fixed it, you can see it in blue. So from, I mean, you can actually, some people can recognize this, but let's just go through this. Uh, this is actually an XOR, and I've, I've denoted that with the XOR uh, symbol here, a plus with a circle around it. So if we, if we on the left-hand side here, right here, if we, if we look at the XOR, the XOR, of course, the output is only uh, true when the inputs are different. When the inputs are the same, the output is false. So when we make the Carnot map for the XOR, we'll notice that you get this Carnot map because 1 and 0 is 1 and 0 and 1 is 1 and 0 and 0 is 0 and 1 and 1 is 0. And this, in fact, then creates this Boolean expression. So that, that Boolean expression can be written or can be drawn in a circuit where you take A and B naught and you and them because it's a sum of products and you take A naught and B and you and them and then you or the output. However, this can also be written as one logic gate as an XOR gate. And of course, the symbol, as I mentioned before, is here. So we can simply write now C0 multiplied by the XOR of A and B, or A, X, or B. Now, let's take the second term here, which is added to the first term, A0, B0, C, plus A, B, C. And of course, this also has a common factor of C. And we'll factor that out. And so we get A0, B0 plus AB. Now this is also a special combination. And we'll recognize this as an X nor. And again, over here on the left, I've got the side note of the X nor. And here is the output, again, for the truth tail for the XOR. The, it, it's, it's the inverse of the XOR, so the output is only true if they're the same. And here is the, 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 the Carnot map for it. And of course, we can deduce the equation, Boolean expression for it, as we did before. And we can even draw it like this. But recognize that this now is an x nor. And here's the equivalent uh, x nor 
logic gate diagram, and they're equivalent. But now when we write it, we'll use the XNOR symbol in our Boolean expression, which is a circle with a dot inside of it. And so now we can write C A X nor B. Now when we combine number two and number one here, we'll now notice that we can actually use a substitution to simplify this even further. And the substitution is we can substitute the variable x for a, x, or b. Therefore, x naught would be a, x nor b. So we'll just copy down the c naught times x plus c times x naught instead of having a plus b. A, a x or b and a x nor b. Now what you can notice here is that this expression here with the c's and the x's is the exact same pattern for x or except in this case it's c x or x and when we substitute the x back in we'll get C, X, or A, X, or B. And of course, we can rewrite this in a different order. That's not going to change the answer. And we get A, X, or B, X, or C. So essentially, we've taken that long expression up, up at the top, which was up here, this guy here, and we've changed it into A, X, or B, X or C. And of course this is this is much simpler not only to write but also to draw the circuit diagram and we'll see uh, how much simpler it is in a little bit. Now that we've done the sum we can now move on to the carry. So if you look back up at the top and you can see all this uh, on my website. You can see the truth table again. We'll, it'll create this K-map. And using the prime, there's three prime implicants here. Remember, we can't circle three uh, ones, only one, two, four, eight, and so on. So we've got three pairs here. And it's AC, BC, and AB. And they're all asserted there's no, uh, there's no, uh, knots in there. So we can finish the diagram and we'll end up having the, the diagram looks something like this, right? We'll draw A, B, C and we'll draw three lines down and this was the sum, this was really easy A, X or B, X or C and that's the sum. And now for the carry, we got A, C, B, C, A, B. A, C, B, C, A, B. And they're all, it's the sum of products, so they're all anded, and then they're XORed. Now, sorry, did I say XOR? I meant ORed. Uh, the OR gate can actually take three inputs, okay? So we could replace these two OR gates with just one OR gate and have three inputs from the three AND gates. That is sufficient. However, there is a way, I mean, this is not wrong, it's correct, but there is a way to simplify it a little bit more. And so I wanted to show you that as well. So if we scroll down, we can simplify, and we just need a little bit of Boolean algebra here. We can simplify this term for the carry, and we need we need some uh, identities from Boolean algebra, namely a variable and its not, its inverse, right? A plus a not that's equal to one, obviously. Okay. If you think about if you think about plusing, you're oring them, right? So whatever you have, if you take the inverse, it's always going to end up being one. Um, now, here, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the middle term, BC, by 1. Now, that doesn't change anything, okay? 
but what we can now do is multiply it out so this becomes uh, ABC here and this becomes A naught BC so multiplying it out gives us this now what we're going to do is we're going to collect terms we'll collect this term here the ABC put it on the left and take the last term AB and put it second the reason for this is because we can now factor out C and notice there's a you can put a 1 here and that's not going to change anything so if we factor out a C plus 1 we multiply C times AB you get ABC and 1 times AB is AB but 1 plus C if you or it that's just 1 so we can now replace this term with just c plus 1 being equal to 1. And so we, we simplified it. And notice here now we can do the same thing again, this time by adding a b plus a b naught for the middle term. And then this will expand into abc plus a no, a b naught c. And now we can again factor out the 1 plus c which becomes again a 1 and it simplifies down to just a b plus a b naught c plus a naught b c now we can factor out the c and we're back to something we recognize that's an xor so the whole thing the carry simplifies down to a b plus C times A X or B. And we don't save a whole lot, but what's really uh, convenient here is that we already have A X or B. So it was used in the sum. So instead of creating another uh, XOR gate, we'll just use this one for two purposes. We use this first XOR gate not only for the sum, but we'll also take a lead off of the output and use it for the carry as well. So now the, the carry becomes C and A, X, or B. And then the other part is A, B. And there it is. A, B is added together. And now since they're added, we OR them together and we get the carry. And this, what you're looking at here, these five gates, is the simplest form of the full adder. However, just so that you could see what happens when we don't do simplifications, I wrote down the equation here for the initial sum and the initial carry, and I drew everything out. Now granted, we could Simplify it by combining all the three OR gates into one OR gate. Uh, and Logisim is a great uh, software to use to, to, um, to like simulate this. And, and I've got this dotted red line here separating from my carry. And again, we can combine those two OR gates as well. But nonetheless, you can see that this is a lot more work. It's a lot more, it's a lot more gates. And um, this, these five gates up here is a much simpler way of doing the full adder. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, that's the end of my Carnot Math video.